with more and more park-ups getting shut down seemingly week by week. What's the solution, people, of how to keep these open and all work together? Are you ready for another, another vlog this week, Frank? Welcome back, Tristan Kez. You know the deal. Tell them what you've been up to. You getting involved this week? Hey. Hey, welcome back, Tris, Kez, and Frank. Oh, sorry, Murphy. I'm Murphy. Woke up, eaten, who? We sparked, ate a stick, went to sleep. On repeat. This week, he's like, uh, gets involved in the YouTube video from the off. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's get into this. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to your mum, shout out to your dad. I am in, uh, what's it, do they say? Business up top, party down bottom. Is that what they say? <laughs> no? Yeah, say like that. Is that what they say? It's cold and it's rainy, so I've got my fleecy trousers Proper wet on. today, isn't it? The camera from this, but up, aren't you? Yeah, hopefully that's what we've got. You oh, can't okay, see. so you can't see the Christmas slippers and fleecy trousers. You're not here for Frank updates. <laughs> You're here for some insightful content from us. Ah, so, this week, we wanted to chat about something we've seen popping up quite a lot recently yeah. online. I mean, it's an ongoing topic. We want to try and shift the perspective. There's a lot to complain about in the world. <laughs> I have this thing that if you're going to complain, then come up with a solution. Rechannel that frustration into something positive. This week, we wanted to chat about park-ups and, well, I suppose the closure of, yeah, of many. Getting shut down left, right and centre. And I think the thing is with, with them being shut down is everyone seems to be up in arms and, I don't know why these places are being shut down. Let's be honest. Let's not beat around the bush. It's because they get abused. It really is that simple. But it isn't by the collective. We do share park ups with everyone to enjoy the ones we've been to that we love because our consensus is that people are good people and that is something that I will always want to believe in and from the park ups we've been to 99.9% .9 of people are respectful. There is that 1% that does ruin it for mm. a few. I was chatting to a friend on Instagram, a park up that's recently reopened in Dorset. People have been emptying chemical toilets down the public loos. We've seen people running off into bushes with toilets. We've seen open urination. You know, we're not gonna sit here and pretend it doesn't happen because it does. What can we do as a collective to save these spots? Rather than last ditch interaction is to complain it's been taken, how can we stop that? As a collective, how can we work together and work with other people to keep these spots open and I guess in a sense like show certain areas and councils that it's worthwhile having motorhomes, campervanners. Absolutely. The tourism that it brings to some local areas, especially in Scotland, we've had a chat with many small business owners. It's fantastic. It really brings money into these more rural communities. About some of the messed up things we've seen. Well, I mean, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought we could just rattle off a few. I thought I had with open urination and emptying of the toilets. I think it's more so for uh, the reason this subject became relevant for us this week is Milford on Sea is one of our most favourite park ups. We've heard recently that after years of that being a real van life as paradise, it is now being closed down to overnight. Yeah. You know, we have been there where we've seen most homes emptying wastewater. It runs into the sea, guys. That's not how you dispose of water. We've seen caravans dumped there. So are we? shocked it's being closed no without penalizing and you know pointing the finger at, at certain individuals what can we do to encourage respect of the area could we all collectively go in and buy litter pickers and leave like some bin bags on a post and litter picker at each spot is it a simple thing of creating some posters to remind people that if they don't respect these areas they'll get taken yeah. away i mean you have to put don't drink on bleach maybe it is something as simple as that you know if someone's going to empty their chemical loo and sees a sign to say that because of their actions this spot might not be here next time they come but make them think twice so i don't want this to be we're not complaining we're trying to find a solution more and more spots are going what can we do to save them we have seen so many haven't we yeah i reckon well over 10 yeah and some of them have been incredible i'll make this a quick story <laughs> and whenever i say that a lot of members of my family roll their eyes because it's never quick so we were in Scotland, we were doing the NC500 Thor on Park night, great little park up, little car park, slip way into the sea, right next to the water. Oh, perfect for us, wasn't yep. it? Got there, went for a walk, came back. There's a gentleman looking interesting with his uh, engine running, walk over and I was like, because I could see he wanted to have a word. I was like, you're right, buddy. Long story short, <laughs> um, he said he doesn't mind people staying there. It's actually locally owned car park that all the residents have invested into and they own it. They don't mind people coming there, staying overnight. They know the deal, they know the NC500. 
1800, some of them have camper vans. What their problem was, houses line the car park and there are families and young children that live in some of these houses. And what they said was they have witnessed people literally going to the toilet in the car park. David, who was the chap I spoke to, was, again, couldn't have been more lovely. He said, look, we provide a bin there. Going put into it. in a bag and put it in the yeah. bin. We were like, yeah, cool, David. Yeah, we'll be in the corner here. No trouble. We're just going to be in our van. He was like, ah, oh, there's no problem there, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry for the accent. A couple of camper vans pulled into the middle of the car park set up their chairs like it was a campsite. Mm. No, two huge motorhomes, almost like Winnebago style things, pulled yeah. in and as they jumped straight out, they just started urinating all round the back of their van. This place isn't gonna last. Look, I'm parked for night, it's completely gone. Um, and we were like, what would, what do we do? Because naming and shaming comes with a whole host of kind of dangers in itself. We don't want to vilify people. There needs to be an education, yeah. isn't there? I think that's the thing. There's far too much pointing fingers in the world and blame rather than feeding with the negative how can we flip this how can we educate the few because van life is a beautiful way of travel it's to, to be so remote and so close to nature is what people desire and crave and to start gatekeeping that because of a few just ah it just seems it seems so sad and unnecessary there are organizations out there campra brit stops that are all trying to work with finding a way to navigate more wild park ups i should say yeah yeah forestry scotland do an amazing job check out our scotland series they do the whole stay the night scheme that you can pay stay somewhere beautiful and for example we're in the new forest at the moment a lot of people will say it's impossible to van life wild park in the new forest in effect it is every car park is signposted you must leave by dusk there is no wild camping however collection of almost seven new forest campsites which are all low cost you pay sort of between 10 15 sometimes 20, 20 yeah. pounds so yes you are paying a small nominal fee when you're in scotland lots of wild park ups that's fine but what's the yeah what's the solution that's what we're trying to figure out you know, we came up with a fleet you know, idea that you could have little non-branded cards that just says if you seen someone do something, you can pop it on their windscreen saying, your actions may cause this park up to be shut down. Um, you know, I, I hope that's a slightly non-threatening way of doing something. I'm trying to work it out. But yeah, is it leave litter pickers? A friend I was talking to on Instagram is you've obviously got travelers and holiday makers that like to wild camp, but there are people that live in their vans. Um, so losing park ups is a big deal to, to a certain subset of people. How can we change this? Who do we need to speak to? Yes, we've had some lovely times at Milford, haven't oh, we? Oh yeah, so many nice times, isn't it? It'd be a real sad, sad situation to see it go. But yeah, as we say on the flip side, we kind of totally understand. I laugh, it's not a funny situation at all. It's actually really, really sad, isn't it? Preparation, education, yep. and how do we move forward as a collective? So that's probably a good point is, yeah, how do you respect areas? Um, how do you pick a park up? I mean, we did do a video on how to find the perfect park up using Google Maps, which gives you a much better idea of the area you're going to. I think be fully equipped when you're going to a park up. Always have a backup. If there's too many people, you can move on. But yeah, a quick rundown of respectful parking as we see it. And add in the comments if there's any extra points. I would say, first but not least, don't stay if there's lots of vans. So we do always have a sort of a rule that if yeah. there's sort of two or three or more vans, we will move on. Take your rubbish with you. You. that seems like a no-brainer check google maps as kez said sometimes to see if there are bins where you're headed to clear up the area in which you're camping in if possible don't be picking up other people's rubbish with bare hands either get yourself a litter picker or just some marigolds they work perfectly be respectful don't be sitting outside as if it's a campsite other people might argue that point with us it's a car park you know don't empty your wastewater yeah don't empty your black water waste your toilet waste anywhere other than you should do there are other solutions we've got a chemical toilet so we only empty it like at elsin points and where we can at campsites other um little facility points like check out camper as you said because it will let you know like if you're in scotland all the places that you can do yeah, that we found a really random one in scotland like this guy's sort of like working farm yeah like, like, was, like horses and ponies yeah and and it was like a fiver and... to empty your toilet and fill up with water and it was yeah really random but that was perfectly timed because we were pretty desperado yes for that. so educate yourself on the local area we've got a website tristankes.com 
um, where we've listed out all of the public showers in Scotland. Research the area you're going to. We, When we travelled in Leo, our T5 was a lot smaller. The toilet was much more for emergencies than regular use. It's more that we just wanted to kind of like discuss this. A, convey our sadness that Milford on Sea. Uh, is imminently shutting down for overnight parking. But we wanted to open the conversation with you guys because we assume the majority of you are vanners, motorhomers, camper vanners, in some way, or aspiring to be outdoors in nature more. So you've all got an opinion. <laughs> We're opening up the comments to hear well, it. And also people that don't, who watch our channel and you don't maybe travel in a van, you know, you're a dog walker that yeah. uses these car parks. And, you know, what what would you like to see from banners to show that there's respect from the area? Yeah. How can we flip what is a very negative conversation and never a very negative action? How can we flip it? What can we do to bring you up to speed with where we are and what we're doing currently? me hey we live in our van by the way if you're van lifers and you're hoping for you know the sort of couple that count off the countries as they're flying through border crossings oh we've been to 12 countries in three months <coughs> we're the wrong couple yeah. <laughs> we decided about five weeks ago now to adopt a more slow travel mentality we've been doing van life part-time for five years full-time for the last year there's this constant need and urge i think i've mentioned this in other videos to to push on to see more to, to build up that destination list yeah so slow travel means we haven't left the new forest we are loving yeah, it here, it's, aren't lovely, we? yeah. it's really really lovely we're enjoying the wildlife the nature learning about the area there's just so much we still haven't seen we are planning on leaving the new forest we have an mot due on old gertie we're thinking our slow travel is going to take us to do some surfing yeah that's, fingers crossed <laughs> that's the plan this time i might actually learn how to stand up without falling off and almost crying <laughs> <laughs> but that's also our point you know we've been back and forth to Cornwall so many times but have we actually stopped for a month and really soaked up the area no that's what we're going to be doing yeah what did we wake up to the other morning five Shetland ponies walking around the we just heard it went no yeah rain's been hammering down all Frank. morning it's just it's gone also, just set up, buy me a coffee. You can buy us coffee, which helps keep awesome content going week after week for you guys. And thank you to Mark, who bought us a coffee last week. He's our first buy us a coffee. You absolute legend. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. you go on to our page. We're actually giving out some free screensavers and phone backgrounds of our amazing photography we take on our travels. So even if you can't make it there, you can have it in the palm of your hands. Until next week, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification because it really helps us out guys bye for now